Hi, this is Miss Downey, and we are beginning Chapter 6, Section 1 of Algebra 2. This chapter is about roots and radical expressions. Our objective is to find the nth roots. So, uh, to begin, I ask everyone to explain and to write in their math journals what is the cubic root of 125. So, I want them to explain the process of how they solved that problem. Once they did, they wrote this process in their math journal. And then we began the lesson. Um, to begin, we need to understand that when you uh, work with powers, corresponding to every power, it has a root. There is a root for every power. So if I have 5 squared equals 25, then we can say that 5 is a square root of 25. And if I have 5 cubed equals 125, then we can say that 5 is a cube root of 125. And then for a fourth, 5 to the fourth power, 625, then we can say 5 is a fourth root of 625, and so on and so forth. But as we see, a pattern develops and we can write a formula from this. So this pattern is suggesting a definition for the nth root. So for the nth root, we can say if a to the n equals b, with both a and b real numbers, and n is a positive integer, then a is the nth root of b. And that's what we developed from the previous page. Now there's some properties that apply to this. If this n is an odd number, an odd power, then we can say it has only one real root, one answer. And then if this is an even number, then it's going to have two roots, one being positive, one being negative. And we call the positive one the principal root. Um, and the negative is just the opposite of that. Now, if we have an even, let's see what this would look like. Even would be 2, so we could say the square root being an even of 4. There we go. So let's look at our first case here. 4 is positive, and this is an even because it's square. We say it has two roots, the principal and the opposite, the negative root. So it's going to be a positive 2 being the principal and the negative 2. So it has those two answers. Now, what happens if we have the square root? So it's an even index. And I'll go into some terminology real quick. Um, this is called the radicand. I'm sorry, the radical sign. What's underneath that is our radicand. And what is right here, like if I wanted a cubic root, this is called our index. If there's no index, it's just assumed to be 2, as in this case. All right. So if our, we've got a positive index of 2, and our radicand is a positive so it's a 4, so we know our answer is positive negative 2, with 2 being our principal second root. Now, back to where I was. What happens if I've got an even index and a negative radicand? Well, there is no real root that exists for that, because you can't take something and multiply it an even number of times and come up with a negative answer. Because we're saying, well, what can I multiply, uh, in this case, two times, and get a negative 4? It just doesn't exist. And remember, we're not working with imaginary. We're only working with the real numbers. So if it's odd, let's do this one. Then there's only one answer. Right? Or we could have a negative 
be negative 2. Okay, so there's just one answer if the index is odd, but if our index is even, it can have two answers. If this is positive under here, we're going to have two answers. But if this is negative, then there is no real root that exists. Okay, any nth root of 0 is always equal to 0. Okay. All right, so problem 1 says what are the real cube roots, so the real, not principal, but real, so of a cube root means it's odd index, so it's going to have only one answer of 0 0.008, so what can we multiply together three times and get that would be a 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 is our only real cube of 0 0.008. And negative 1,000 is going to be negative 10 cubed. So negative 10 is our only real cube root of negative 1,000. And uh, 1 third is our only real cube, cube root of 1 over 27. Because 1 third times 1 third times 1 third equals 1 27th. So that's when we just have one answer when our index is odd. Now what happens when they're asking for it to be even? So we're going to have two answers or no answer. So what's the real fourth root of 1? So the real fourth root of 1 is going to be positive or negative 1. So we have two answers, positive negative 1. And for negative 0 0.0001, um, it doesn't matter what this was, we're asking for an even power of a negative number. So it doesn't matter what this is, there's not going to be any solution, no real num root exists. No fourth root exists for them. And then uh, the fourth root of 1681, well that's going to be uh, two-thirds, positive two-thirds and negative two-thirds. Okay, and you just have to reverse multiply. You have to think what times what times what times what equals that number. So hopefully for the sake of the exercises they'll be the smaller numbers so you've got to get sharp with your multiplication tables if you're not already. Otherwise, this is going to give you fits. Here's our got it to um, reinforce our, our understanding. Pause if you want to work this. Okay, so according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, x to the fourth minus 1 equals 0 has four roots. But only two of those are real. In this chapter, we're only going to focus on real roots only. Okay, so problem two is broken down into four problems. And so the first, let's see, the instructions were, what is each real number root? So the first one, the real number root, well, we've got an odd index and a negative number. So we know it's going to be a negative 2, one answer, because negative 2 cubed is equal to negative 8, right? So we're just reversing the process to find it. B, so now this is a square root, so it's even, and our radicand's positive, so we know it's going to be a positive negative number. So what are we going to multiply together and get that? Point two. Okay. Oh, did they ask us a oh, real number root? What is each real number root? So we're just going to give them the positive of that. The positive square root. 